Okay, so there are a couple things I need to bring up. So, one, the stream has been... The stream week this week has kind of been foobarred for a couple different reasons. One of which being a surprise meeting that came up earlier in this week. I had to do that, take care of that. That was going to pretty much take up an hour of time, and it did take, an up, take up an hour of time. So, I essentially decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to stream later in the day. That'll sell that. We'll try to go three, if not four hours today. Cross fingers. I have an idea for a raid target already, but hey, we'll get around to that when we get around to that. Two. The stream for tomorrow is also kind of foobard, specifically because... Work kind of called me five seconds, five minutes before that meeting just to say, hey, so we're kind of running into a staffing issue. Could you come in tomorrow? We'll make sure that you're off Sunday instead. So yeah, we're doing a morning Sunday stream because that's what I can manage. Uh, I, I hate, I hate my luck. This much, it makes sense in my case because the workplace that I'm a part of has been chronically under- has been very critically understaffed after they got bought out by a new company and everything, so they're going through a whole bunch of growing pains, and I, I need to do what I can to not just stabilize my position, but also make sure that I can keep growing in this company, because it's going to be giving me a lot of opportunities in my field and psychology. Ugh. So I need to do a bit of gambling, and that means... Unfortunately, I gotta shift over the stream by a day. But don't worry. We're still doing our two day our two stream a week schedule. Maybe three, we'll see. That's just how that pattern's gonna be going. And I'm getting a dick sword ping. Where's that dick sword ping coming from? Okay, nowhere important. Ugh. But that aside. Donagamara! My name is Sage Blake. I'm a wanderer, storyteller, artist mature, and the big reason why I'm getting around to One Step from Eden again is specifically because, and I have to blame him for this, Waterbots got me back into it. <laughs> Just, the modding community for Eden has been fairly strong, it's still going to the day, and there are a lot of different mods that exist, and I wanted to cover a few more of them, just have a nice, fun, rompy time. As for which ones I have installed, and I kid you not, this took at least six minutes by itself to install all of these mods. We have the following. Some of them are fairly simple and benign, just add a character, voila. Some of them are very critical to make sure things work, like adding Lua power, and T is peppering me with Fionn heads. I hope that's working. I'm not sure if it is. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, just today on the whole, this week on the whole has been just one giant flail fest. I'm sorry. I don't know why that's not working. You know what? Screw it. I just need to relax, play a game. Oh no. T? Wait, we can talk to him! <laughs> I'm ruined. They're everywhere! <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, in terms of, uh... Mod things. Some of them are simple, some of them are complicated, and... Some of them just outright add entire functionalities and areas, and... I want to show at least a few of these off, because it's interesting seeing that. And, of course, the memeiest of memeiest. Flashing colors warning. 
<laughs> this by itself was what got me back into playing this game. Just memes. I I'm easy to entertain. So how this character works is... Auto-fire the attack, you just constantly generate mana. Party, indeed. Uh, hmm. None of these are all that great. Because I've seen at least of this character... Calibration is... Anima, but... A good chunk of it is also in Glimmer. So I might want to invest in some Glimmer, too. While I'm playing through this, I'll also explain the basics of One Step from Eden, just generally how it works. Think of it like... Roguelike Mega Man, essentially. <laughs> Hello, Muffin. Dino's working. There's a ping and everything. Oh, because it's not using the proper ping. Oh, well. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Ooh, interesting. Not great, though. I mean, Minefield does have its uses, but... Eh. percent chance of applying frost when poison damage. I don't have poison, so I'm better off just taking the mana. Mega Man the Roguelike. Essentially, that's the explanation. Ow. Blech. It's really fun. It's really engaging. It can also be fairly difficult if you're not prepared for it. The work meeting that I had? Um, essentially, Workplace is adopting a new policy for medical testing, and they needed to make sure that we were on board with how it worked and the generalities of how to properly use the new system. Because from now on, we're going to be using that system, and... It's going to require a bunch of front-loaded work, just to make sure everything is properly calibrated. You know what? Sure. <laughs> Energy deck! It's not a deck at all, it's my dick! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Hope you're doing well. But yeah, the types of mods I have installed, some of them add some extra cards and everything. So if, if any of these cards look weird, that's the reason- OW! Why? Rude. Case in point. But even with that, while some of these cards are due to mods, for example, Repair here is due to an expansion that adds a bunch of Hexawam cards. Judgment Cut here is from an expansion that adds a bunch of Slash Pick cards. But even then, we are going to encounter a few new cards here and there because this game has updated a few times to... Augment other cards that exist, add some artwork, etc, etc. And I also wanted to just meddle around with the Twitch Integ. It's relatively simple stuff, really. So something that y'all can do at any point when I get an artifact or a card, y'all can vote on it. 
If you like my options, then feel free to set up a vote, and I'll wait the appropriate time and make a decision from there. Yeah, I think I'm going to spare you. And now we get into one of the other bigger mods. Entire area is based on Mega Man Paddle Network. Complete with bosses. That will absolutely wreck me. Because this particular mod is a little imbalanced. I mean, Sweeper isn't bad, but it ain't great either. I think I'll just scrap that, honestly, and get a little more XP. Shatter you. Get that judgment cut up. And there we go. Oh, I need that HP. Insurance policy! Gain money when a structure is destroyed. I don't use structures, but sure, I'll take it. Fuck. Tempting. I might as well take it. Dance! Wee! Do to this. Ag! Actually, that's a bad idea. If you play a lot of Battle Network, you'll recognize some of the enemies that come up, like that Boomer, the med the Medi. Ooh. Boomerang is a pretty good card just across the board. So is Soulfire. Soulfire is one of those cards that needs a whole bunch of building to make work. Oh, sorry, Thanos. I, I kind of blanked on my explanation. And PK Thunder. You know, I'll take Soul Fire. Sagon Armor, Spare Batteries. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, essentially, you have a bunch of techniques available for each character. You have a basic trigger attack that you could just spam out. In my case, it constantly generates mana. You also have a bunch of spells. Spells are given randomly to you in a specific, in a random order every time the deck gets shuffled. When you run out of spells, the deck shuffles, it takes some time to reload, and then you get some new spells. Every time you spend a spell, you get a new one based on what's at the bottom of the stack at the left. All spells have a few different qualities. They have some general effects, some damage when they hit, and a mana cost. So, for the current spells that I have, Incline on my B button costs 3 mana. In order for me to use another spell, I need to have, say, 4 or 5 mana right now. Which is why I can just constantly build my mana by holding down the button. Because, as you can see, it's building really, really slowly. There are also a bunch of artifacts that you can get. Every character starts with one by default. In my case, I could just walk over broken tiles, ignore them. They won't cause pits. They won't cause problems. Other than that... Ice cream that slows enemies whenever I successfully deal frost damage. Extra mana. Yeah. Thanks. Shock an enemy every time I shuffle the deck. I don't know what that uh, specific thing does. Ow. Because it's part of another expansion of mods. Gain money whenever a structure is destroyed. So rocks, turrets that I create, that type of thing. Increased mana regen for a little bit after hitting an enemy with a thunder spell. So out of the ones in my deck, anytime thunderstorm hits, anytime surge hits. And that's about it. Every time we clear a map... Oh! Ow! 
Thanks. Every time we clear a map, we can go up another area on the tracker here, get another encounter. Generally, the objective is kill all your enemies. Then you get to move to the next map. Oh, that's really tempting. Because that's maintenance. But that also requires me to get a lot of spells. I might take the undershirt, honestly, because a straight two defense is very useful. It means I take two less damage from anything that hits me. Let's see. Current two options. Take a hazard, so essentially something really, really dangerous is about to absolutely wreck me if I'm not careful. Otherwise, just get some straight health. My health is doing fine, I've got 800 of it. So let's just deal with the hazard. Ow. Those items in the back were Sarah piles. They're money, essentially. When they break, I get a bit of funding. Of course, I still need to pick it up, but hey. Ring of Fire! Create flames four tiles away in a, in a circle. When enemies stand on flames, they constantly take chip damage over time. I think it's like 30 damage every second if they stay within the flame. That does have its uses, but I don't exactly have a way of maintaining Trinity, so I might not take that. Essentially, this is a way of constantly regenerating mana, but it has a high upfront cost. And it's also fairly damaging. Bouncing Boulder. This one is a new spell, period. Toss a rock that bounces a couple times and continually deals damage. I might take the Ring of Fire, honestly. Alright, and we have a shop. Shops are relatively standard. You can spend your Sarah, your money, to get a whole bunch of artifacts, get spells, get upgrades, or removals, in the case that you want to get rid of some of these spells. Such, I should probably consider it at some point, but... I'm not 100% sure. Maybe Judgment Cut, because I'm not using that one as much. We could also take packs. Essentially, these are trade-offs. Take a penalty now, you gain a benefit afterward. In this case, lose 140 immediate health, gain a bunch of luck. Alternatively, every time we cast a spell, take damage, and heal some HP. For a single battle. Out of the options here... Shuffle artifacts trigger when you kill an enemy. That might be useful, because I already have something that procs on shuffle anyway. That being the energy deck. Now on top of that, probably invest in some upgrades. And now, time to play the Wheel of Gacha. By spending upgrades, you can take a spell you have and then give it an extra benefit. Say, on use, gain half of your mana back immediately. Reduce the mana cost. Cast it twice, but increase the mana cost. They have their own benefits, they have their own flaws. Generally, it's a good idea to take an upgrade whenever you can, but if your options suck, you still should probably take one, even still. Because you don't get these upgrades back. And at that, every time you upgrade a spell, the amount of upgrades required to upgrade it again increases by one. Hmm. I think I'll upgrade Soulfire next. Need the flame, increase the damage. You know what? Straight increase to damage might be useful. That way I could kill sooner and gain extra benefits. And now for a boss. It's enormous wood, man! Okay, stay 
there. Use the incline. This game can very quickly turn into bullet hell if you're not careful, and even when you're, you are careful, it can. But that's kind of what I like it. It's a nice reflex test. Every time you get a victory, it feels earned. It feels like you mastered a good chunk of the game to warrant that victory. And toasty. That's a new one. That's also a modded spell, I believe. So launch a small column of, nime, of knives twice at a couple of kunai. Interesting. Kunai are a consumable card. It, they're fairly generic. There are builds that revolve around them. They can be fairly useful, too. I have never seen that one before. Doesn't seem all that useful. This one, on the other hand, I do have a benefit that from structures, so I might as well. Even if it's just one money, the simple turret coming up might be a good idea. I could use it as a wall. If enemies hit it, then they suffer damage equal to what they put into it. I believe this thing spawns with 120 health by default, so that's not terrible. Oh, all of these suck. Because I don't really gain shielding. So this doesn't have any immediate benefit. Losing max mana on a character that just generates mana by itself isn't great either. And the removal is just a removal. I'll skip. Fudge it. Next area, please. Oh, you jerk. Eat a saw blade. Whew. That does have its risk and reward, but that requires having a super small deck to make it work. And I don't really have that. Shine is very powerful, but very centralized. But that, then again, that's just how Glimmer works on the whole. It's very high risk, high reward. If the stars align, it deals ridiculous damage to targets and shreds them to nothing. But the problem is getting those stars to align. I'm honestly thinking you just take the thunder, because... That by itself synergizes with my, uh, other stuff. Dance! Damn it. Mag! I guess if you want to risk it, you're taking the gateway to Glim- Ah. Uh... Nice. Ow. Scrap these. None of them are worth it. Peek and fire, maybe, but other than that, yeah, not so. Crap. Crap. Eat shiny things. Eat more shiny things. Eat more shiny things. Eat more shiny things. Oh no. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Ow. Zep shot. That's I sure. Thanks. You know what? I'll take PK Thunder. Huh. I mean, these, the straight HP might be useful, but poison. Now hear me out on this. Poison. 
I have a di don't have any synergy with poison. Fact. Yeah, screw it. I'll take the poison anyway. <laughs> Thanks for the freebie! That has no benefit! Hmm. I mean, Paragon ain't bad. It does require some awkward positioning, though. And then again, I'm already doing awkward positioning, too, so... Maybe I could make it work. But time stop, though. If I remember correctly, you could still move during the time stop, so it might be useful in some respects. I'll take it. What's the worst that could happen? I know I'm gonna die. Burnination! Egg. Lock it up. <laughs> no, what? That's actually really good. Double take. Grants a couple to kunai's immediately, and it already has an upgrade to give it a third kunai on top of that. That's ideal for this type of card. Chain bubble. Did I mention one of the mods that I have installed is specifically for uh, adding Mega Man Star Force related stuffs? I like Star Force. Apparently, it adds a stack of frost to the target. Interesting. And breakout kind of sucks. Yeah, it's single use and also uh, double damage currently. Consuming a card does have its uses, it does have its merits. There are certain artifacts and builds that revolve around consuming cards and shrinking down your deck a lot. And across the board, consume cards aren't terrible either. Having a smaller deck on shuffle might be a good idea in some cases. It depends on the case. But it could be something to spec in. Look at it glow! <laughs> And this is the moment when I say I absolutely love Mega Man Star Force. Ox Tackle! On a, I believe it's like, two second delay. Toss a massively powerful projectile down the row. Very useful, but it's also situational. If you don't have the right situation to punish an opponent with it, then it's not as great. Because it requires a lot of pre-planning and prediction, and it might be a little too high brain. I could take Combust, but I only really have one synergy for it. So I might as well just take the Ox Tackle. I'll... Yeah, exactly! Especially since I'm going up against the fish himself. Crap! We try again. Yeah, have a bubble. Have that. Need that. Arrgh! And that's why you gotta be careful with putting down turrets like that. Because if you hit them, they get hit back. I knew I was gonna die the moment I ended up with Bass. I know it's base. Just, that specific boss is kind of 
way too powerful. But hey. Actually, one of the mods that I do have equipped does give extra sets to the actual characters of the game. With the exception, actually, including Saffron. Huh. Because normally, Saffron is the only character with, like, three movesets. Default, Chrono, which is very beginner-friendly, and the third you get from successfully doing the kill-everyone path, and... Ugh. That's a pain in the bitch. Because that also requires killing the shopkeeper, and it's a pain, and no thank you, no thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, hi, CL. <laughs> There's the parallel to Mega Man Zero. Reva specializes in a bunch of defenses. Gunner shoots shit, explodes shit. Really simple. Selicy does a lot of gimmicking. Yes, that's the canon pronunciation. Selicy. Hazel. Got an art upgrade. And Shizo did as well. And yes. Yes, Daniel. I did say that one of my mods was adding Mega Man Star Force units. They're also adding... They're also mods to add just randomly Sigurdi, because why not? Her set is terrible. We don't talk about the Toho. And... We also don't talk about you. Oh, and there's a heal Navi. Why heal Navi? Why not? <laughs> Actually, out of all the uh, characters' extra sets, the only one that I've tampered with is Marksman, and that's because it's actually impressive what this thing does. Castlevania-inspired... They kind of fit the art style, yeah. Fuck. Of course we have to start with this area. Toss your shield. Bonk, 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 bonk. Okay, so the quick explanation of how this version of Shizo works. Every time I hit a target with a spell, I lose spell power, but gain melee attack power. By using my weapon, the reverse happens. I immediately spend 10 attack power and gain 10 spell power. It's an interesting set where it revolves around being able to fletch at storm targets and then hit them with something super powerful. I don't channel. So I'll take the 3D printer. Nah. Alright, while well, I'm at it. Something else I didn't explain. Focus. You can set this focus at any point. You can set up to two foci. There are a bunch of, of spell families in the game, each with their own strengths and trade-offs. And I think... Yeah, I want to channel Trinity on this. So let's go Convergence and a bit of Kinesis, too. Make your jokes about the names now, and they're fairly... Uh... Accurate to what each family specializes in. Anima is the all-arounder. It's elemental. Doesn't have any strength, doesn't have any weakness. Convergence has a lot of things that require setup or gimmickry, but to get that set up in the first place ends up being tricky. Double Lift has a bunch of cards that are well, deck manipulation and trade-offs. Super powerful now, but there are penalties on the back end. Glimmer is the reverse of that. When all the stars are aligned, you deal stupid damage. Otherwise, you're gonna struggle. Hello, Ligaris. Hope you're doing well. 
Hearth deals a lot of tile manipulation and destruction. Hexawan is turrets and that type of stuff. Kinesis, moving yourself and moving your opponents. So far I'm doing well, yeah? Thank you. Thank you for asking. My favorite families end up being Misery, Phalanx, and Slash Pick. Misery because it deals with a lot of health manipulation and poison. A true gentleman's weapon. Phalanx because it deals in a whole lot of obtaining and spending defenses. And lastly, Slash Pick. Fairly short ranged for the most part, but fairly good damage too. For the current character that I've got, Kinesis and Convergence tend to do well because, again, my big goal is to fletch it storm my opponent. Toss out some claw traps. Start chipping like that. Ooh, back! Great. Thank you for the follow, Ligeris. Welcome to Synapse. We host all types of wanderers here, yourself included. Yeah. Oh, crap, I missed the salt lady. But I do have Trinity on this minigun, so... Once this turret moves out of the way, pepper you. Done. Oh, that's... Hired gun isn't great. You know what the beam crystals thinking about it? I guess I'll take double pick. Excuse me? Mm. I mean, it's not exactly something to rely on. Monovane might be useful in the long run. I don't really have anything to apply poison. Fuck it. I'm just gonna have to take the lucky badge. Fuck you. There we go. Or not! Get some gunning. Sky J. Hope you're doing well. Happy Friday to you too. Ooh. I mean, I'm already building some Trinity in this, but. Mm. Honestly, Incline or River is my better bet, but I can't use them. They're too expensive. Such, if you do get a spell with, like, a higher mana cost than your total max mana, and end up having to spend one of these spells, you could just spend it, it won't cast the spell, but it will at least remove it from the stack. They thought of that. I mean, I guess I could use Trirag to at least help build the minigun.
crack six tiles or an immediate two defense. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder what I'll take. Get enemies with a 40 damage laser, crack tiles after they spawn. Add a sting to your deck. That does give me a build for poison. Ah! <laughs> Thanks for the bit. That's <laughs> eh, fine, dude. I don't really care. Um... The votes are part of the Twitch thing, so if at any point you just want to recommend I take a specific card, and we... Ow. We're given options like this. Just type. You could just type in any number from 0 to 3 or 0 to 4 and say, Hey, maybe, maybe you should consider taking this. Maybe you shouldn't consider taking this. Yeah, exactly, Lufoser. Also, hello. Hope you're doing well. And ow. <laughs> Thanks for throwing everything at my face. I'll treasure it. Ow. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah, it's a apologize, dude. It's the reason why I have these uh, interacts so cheap. Just because people like messing around with them, and I do too. There we go. And top, top the kunai. Get some funding. I might as well take it. What's the worst that can happen? Mm hmm. See, but they're ain't bad, actually. Um, the specific mod for this Shizo kit is, if I remember correctly, actually, I don't remember the mod exactly. Okay, have a good day, let's have a good day, Ligaris. Stay safe, stay warm. Let's see if I can't get that list of uh, mods I have installed up. If I remember correctly, there's a specific mod that's like expanded starter kits or something like that. Show the weapon an artifact? Yeah, that won't be too bad. Such first, let me at least take that. So, artifact, calibrator. Gain two attack damage and lose two spell power when a spell hits a target. And as for the arm, lowers the target's defenses by two every 20 seconds. Gain 10 spell power, lose 10 attack damage whenever you fire. It's a really gimmicky type of thing that revolves around Fletchet Storm, essentially. Peppering your opponent with a bunch of weak attacks to start with, and then once you get enough damage together, load them up with your basic weapon. Or vice versa. Ah, oh, crap, I missed it. Toss at that. Fuck you. And I'm getting a lot of poison stuff, so I might as well just start tossing it. There we go. Yeah, essentially. You got it in one. 
There are also other mods in here, too, that I add extra cards like this Venom Strike here for additional poisoning. I've got a lot of mods on this now. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. I'm gonna take this. And <laughs> request the Tohovania case. Well, hey, if I could find them, maybe. Eat that. And I hope you enjoy Fletchet Storm, because you're going to be seeing a nothing but Fletchet Storm from both me and the opponent now. Concentration mode. Sorry if I'm tuning out for a little bit. I'm going in full concentration mode right now just to make sure I don't heck and die. And I died anyway. Shit. God. Yomu kind of kicked my ass. <laughs> 